every orbital has associated with it an energy, whether we're talking about an atomic orbital or a molecular orbital. And in this webcast, we're going to see how the LCAO method depends on the energies of the atomic orbitals that are involved and what the resulting molecular orbitals, the energies of the resulting molecular orbitals would be. First, a little bit about uh, orbital energy. Let's take a look at the atomic orbital energies as a function of position in the periodic table. Now, that energy comes from electrostatic forces, that is, the negative uh, charge on the electron and the positive charge on the, the proton that are um, electrostatically held together. And so the stronger that interaction, the more negative that energy is, the stronger the binding force. So negative energy uh, from opposite charges is what is uh, plotted here. So the most negative energy is down on the bottom, this 100,000 value. And we can see that as we move across the periodic table, there's the 1s levels. Uh, as we fill up the 1s, we get to the 2s levels once we hit lithium. Once we hit boron, we begin the 2ps. You can see that the energy falls as we move across the periodic table. But let's move on and talk about the second row of the periodic table and how formal charge also influences the energy of atomic orbitals. These are some very useful trends to keep in mind. Formal positive charge, which is shown here for carbon, you can see it has an energy for either the 2s or the 2p that's much lower than atoms that have negative formal charge. So as we move from positive formal charge to neutral to negative formal charge, the energy is rising. And that makes most sense because an electron negatively charged wants to be held by a nucleus that has a net positive charge, and it's going to be held more tightly by that atom. And similarly for the two Ps, we see that they rise as we go from positive to neutral to negative. As we move across the periodic table, these are the same trends that you saw on the last slide. So if we just look, for example, at the neutral two S's moving across the periodic table, that's connecting those dots together. This trend that I just drew for either the two S's or the two P's is exactly what explains electronegativities. Notice how the energy falls as we move towards fluorine. In other words, an electron on fluorine is held more tightly than it it would be if it were on, say, carbon. And so electronegativity is explained by the ordering of these atomic energy levels.